We invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. When Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, do you know how in the old country some places do not have electricity? Well, here in America is different. Everything is run by electricity. They got electric clock, electric fan, electric heater, electric blanket. They even got electric chair. <laughs> but this must be very expensive because I never see it in nobody's house. <laughs> Another great thing is the television. Television is a wonderful a new invention for showing all the moving pictures. <laughs> it's a funny thing about American people. While they enjoy themselves, they like to eat. They go to baseball game, they must eat the peanuts. <laughs> they go to the movies, they must eat the popcorn. <laughs> and they go see television, they must drink a beer. <laughs> Mamma mia, if they ever stop making a peanuts and popcorn is in a beer, Americans are going to have no place to go but a Turkish bath. <laughs> but uh, Mamma mia, today is a bad day for me. Because this morning when I open up the store, under the door I find a letter. First I think maybe inside is a cash, because on the outside it's to say register. <laughs> Then I open up, and inside is a say, violation of a fire department. Also, there's a lot of bigger words I don't understand. So I think I go to my night school class and ask my teacher, Mrs. Spalding. All right, class, all right. I'll call the roll, please. Mr. Basco? I'm here. Mr. Harwood? I'm here. Mr. Olson? I'm here. Mr. Schultz? What else? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please, in the future, when I call the roll, just say present. Now, we'll begin with our history lesson. Who made that famous speech beginning four score and seven years ago? Mr. Schultz? Present. <laughs> no, no. Present Lincoln? Huh? He's right, yes? Yeah? <laughs> yes. Oh, you see, I'm right. I'm always correct. <laughs> All right. To tell you the truth, was a lucky guess. <laughs> hmm. Miss Spaulding. Uh, Miss Spaulding. Yes, Mr. Basco? Please, Miss Spaulding. I'm in a terrible trouble with the government, and I need advice. Well, class, I was going to devote this hour to discussing good citizenship, so we might as well be practical and learn a lesson from Luigi's problem. Thank you, Miss Spaulding. Well, uh, this morning, the fire department was in my store, uh, and... Golly. Your store was on fire, Luigi. Luigi, I bet now you've got a lot of hot stuff to sell. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> Will the class please come to attention? Mr. Basco, what were you trying to say? I'm worried, because of today I received this letter from the fire department. Oh, give me it, Luigi. Let me see that. Huh? <laughs> Ooh, a red deal. You know, I, I wouldn't got a notice from the health department about my delicatessen. Now, you all eat there. The food is so good. The place is so clean. Well, what happened to Schultz? They condemned the salami. <laughs> no, Luigi, my fellow boober, you are in terrible trouble. Please, please, Miss Spaulding. I don't like to make trouble with the government. I like to be good American. Maybe you tell me what to do. Well, let me see that letter. Luigi Basco, 21 North Halstead Street. 
You are hereby cited for violation of Fire Regulation 14, Civil Code 72, Statute 562J, and failure to comply with the necessary regulations within two days may impose upon you severe penalties and punishments as set forth in the penal code. Now, Kraft, can anyone explain to Mr. Basco what this means? Sure. Alcatraz! <laughs> Please, please, Miss Spalding, I don't want to go to jail. What I should do? Well, Mr. Basco, I suggest you take this up with your alderman, Oswald P. Johnson. Yeah, you, you that's a good idea. Alderman Johnson. He helps everybody in the neighborhood. Oh, thank you, Miss Spalding. You always are helping me out. And someday I'm going to do a big thing for you. Yeah, instead of bringing you an apple, someday he's going to bring you a watermelon. <laughs> Excuse me, please, Mr. Alderman Johnson. My name is... Stop. Don't tell me. I know every man in my district. You're a... Uh, uh, Mr. Garibaldi. <laughs> I'm a Luigi Basco. Basco, that's right. Married. Got eight kids. Please, I'm not the married. What happened to the eight kids? <laughs> Maybe you better ask Mr. Garibaldi. <laughs> I don't ask anybody. Everybody asks me. I take care of everybody. I'm the Dutch uncle of this neighborhood. <laughs> then a please, Uncle a Dutch. <laughs> I'm got a problem as a worry man. Oh, you've come to the right man. Your problem is my problem. I never turned down a voter in my district. You did vote for me last year, didn't you? No. <laughs> Now I'm going to get out the side. How that happened? I think I was a pushed. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, the reason I'm a no vote is I'm a not a citizen. Oh, that's different. But when you do become a citizen, how do you intend to vote? I'm going to look up at the records of all the candidates, and I'm a voter for the best of men. <laughs> This is the time I'm sure he pushed me. <laughs> Please, Mr. Alderman Johnson. Miss Spaulding, she's sent oh, me here. Oh, Miss Spaulding. Wonderful girl. Glad to help you out. What's your trouble? Well, uh, uh, you see, I'm going to see violation from fire department, and I know can understand. Old stuff to me, Basco. I'll phone the commissioner. J.G. is an old buddy of mine. Have your problem ironed out in a minute. J.G. will help us. Hello? Want to speak to J.G.? Just tell him it's O.J. <coughs> Basco, it's in the bag. In the bag? He doesn't remember. Tell him Oswald Johnson. Don't worry, it's in the bag. In the bag? Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Oswald Johnson. All sewed up. All sewed up. <laughs> Hello, J.G.? Ah, uh, he's not in. Back in the bag again. <laughs> well, who's next in charge? All right, let me speak to Lieutenant McKeever. Busy, huh? Any of the firemen around? <laughs> oh. Playing Pinochle. <laughs> Tell you what. Let me talk to the kid who shines the pole. <laughs> now, listen here. This is Alderman Johnson. I'm speaking for one of my constituents. Luigi constituent. I mean, Vasco. He received a notice of fire violation. Huh? Oh, hello, J.G. <laughs> what did I tell you? The minute I mentioned my name, he's on the phone. I'll sew it up now. Hi, right, Mr. Alderman. Only please take me out of the bag before you sew it up, sir. <laughs> J.G., what's the idea of sending one of my constituents a notice of violation? This is not a threat, but if I don't get action in the next election, you'll be out. What? It's violation 562J. Basco. Okay. Goodbye. Basco, how much time did you get to comply? 48 hours. Well, you better do something. You only got 24 now. <laughs> My friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. 
Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter, my little pumpkin head? You look like you would have dumped it. Oh, Pasquale, I'm in a terrible a trouble. I got a paper from a fire department. I take it to Miss Spalding and she sent me to Alderman and he's to make a work. Sure, sure. Go to everybody except you, Fred and Pasquale, and what's to happen? I'm not paying you. Always do you run around like a crazy little mouse looking for a piece of cheese when all the time I'm going to sit there with my bigger trap. <laughs> That's the right, Pasquale. Nobody's got a bigger trap than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it's a come out of different. Give me your paper. Now you're going to get advice from somebody who doesn't know what he's talk about. Ah, very bad. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho. Ah, bad, bad. Hey, Luigi. Who are the Pasquale? What's it say here? I'm going to wear my glasses. Please, <laughs> Pasquale, put on your glasses and read. Help me out. All right, all right, uh, Pasquale, why do you see Italian words? I'm a just a translation so I can understand what I'm a reading. Pasquale, <laughs> <laughs> please uh, hurry up and finish. I've only got a 24 hours. Oh, now is the whole thing clear to me, Luigi? You in a bad of trouble. You is what the fire insurance company is called a bad risk. A bad risk? Why? You have a fire policy more than a one year, and in all that time, you don't even have a one little fire. <laughs> you don't even try. <laughs> but, Squally, city don't want the people who should have a fire. That's a matter for you. In America, fire's the bigger business. Some store, they got a too much of fire, so they sell it. Sell it? Sure. You never see those big signs, the fire sale? <laughs> Pasquale, all this is not to help me with my trouble. It's not going to help me. What's going to happen if I'm going to get it thrown out? You live in my house. Your house? Sure. In my house, there's a kitchen, there's a parlor, there's a bedroom for me and my wife, for Teresa. Other bedroom is for you. What are you, daughter Rosa? She's asleep in that the bedroom. Luigi, she don't mind if her husband's asleep in the same room. <laughs> but I'm not married to us. This can be arranged. <laughs> what do you say, my son? Goodbye, Papa. There's no use to Pasquale. Rush is too fat for me. You call the 250 pounds of fat, she's in, just a little chubby. <laughs> is it too much a chub? <laughs> all right, all right, you big boob. You're so stupid, you believe everything I say before about making a fire. The reason you get this paper is because your place is a fire trap. That's a lie, Pasquale. I never trap a fire in my life. <laughs> please, please, help me out. Why should I help me? Sure. Sure, Louise. I'll help you out. With Squally's like your father. Go ahead and take a walk. I'm going to fix everything for you. By the time you come back, is it going to be all straightened out with a fire department? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pasquale. Abro, Figaro, Bravo, Rissima, Abro, Figaro, Bravo, Rissima, Fortratissima, Fortratissima, Fortratissima. Hello? Mr. Fire Department? I'm having a store next door to Luigi Basco's antique shop. I'm understanding you give him 24 hours to fix up his place. I think you give him too much time. <laughs> huh? Well, uh, I'm not like it to squeal, but I passed his store a minute ago and I smell a smoke. <laughs> Life with Luigi continues in just a moment, but first, these days when the word democracy is spoken a lot, it's a good idea to examine the definition of this word. Democracy is government by the people, collectively, by elected representatives of the people. Government by the people, by you, yourself, by every adult individual who is an American citizen. You are the government. 
And it's up to you to take an active part in governing according to the meaning of democracy. Vote regularly and thoughtfully on all issues, large and small. Take an interest in the affairs of your local community. It is a fact that freedom, democracy, is everybody's job. And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago. We turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. Oh, so, Mamma Mia, I don't know what the Pasquales will do to fix the things up before me. All I know is that when I come home from a walk, I find the fire engines are coming up to my store. I open my door and I say, please, come in. But American firemen, they got their own way of coming in. They break it through the window. <laughs> then they look all over the place. So they knock down everything. They spray the store full of water. And then, then they say, pardon me, you got a fire in this place? <laughs> but now I'm in a real trouble. Because I only got a six hours left to find a place to live. So I'm buying newspaper. And I'm looking for a room. Rooms... Uh... Rooms. Luigi, my fellow boob. <laughs> Hello, Schultz. Luigi, how you made out... What is doing with all the water in the store? There was a lot of trouble with the fire department, Schultz. All of my antiques and the statues, they're still wet. Well, I see Lincoln's beard is still soggy. <laughs> and Washington looks like he's still trying to cross the Delaware. Huh? <laughs> and, the, and the statue of my Uncle Pietro... Is a broken in a half. Ach, when one mm. uncle became two, huh? <laughs> please. Please, <laughs> sure. I'm looking in a newspaper trying to find a place to live. Oh, so I help you, huh? A classified ad. Yeah. Uh, here are some places for you. Here. Rentals. I'm going to have live in a rental. What is it like? A trailer? <laughs> Luigi, stop talking like that. You're getting me all for shimmered. <laughs> here, here. Read for yourself and see. All right. Huh. Batch apps for a fridge. <laughs> hey, what the kind of writing is this? Uh, that's a abbreviation. Go ahead, read on. Batch apps for a fridge got a stool. <laughs> so expose and no expose. <laughs> that's the pref near biz trends and a chitch. <laughs> Rent by your or more. $225. How you like that? Everything is abbreviated but the price. <laughs> Here, here's some more places. Yeah, yeah. 300 a month. Uh -huh. 315. 200. 175. This is a look like it's not possible to sleep on a less you millionaire. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Here's a good one. Huh? Three bedroom apartment overlooking a Lake Shore Drive. Beautifully furnished parquet of floors across the ventilation. Brand new stove and a refrigerator. Forty dollars. Luigi, that's wonderful. Where you see that? Right here, under wanted. Luigi, that means somebody wants it. <laughs> sure, that's right. I want it. <laughs> Believe me, Luigi, you ain't gonna get it. Well, I like to help you, but I got to get back to my store now. Well, uh, well thanks anyway, Schultz. You're a real friend. Right. Goodbye, Luigi, and stop looking so worried. Be like me, Luigi. Smile. <laughs> Ooh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> I wish I could have been like a Schultz always laughing. But I'm going to cry if I'm going to have to find a place this soon. Hey, what's this a big ad? Looks wonderful. Marie Salon. $75, assure you of a permanent home. <laughs> Mamma mia, my problem is solved. Why I have to live in this hall when I can move over there? <laughs> It's a funny looking a place, a real estate officer like this I'm gonna never see. With a big canopy outside. 
Hey, this must have been a place. Sir. Sign it says, sir. One a payment that covers everything. <laughs> well, I'm going inside. Sir. Come in, friend. I'm, I'm a see your ad in the paper. I'm like to take advantage of your offer. Yes, certainly. You've had a misfortune recently. Yes, sir, with a fire department. You have my deepest sympathy. Uh, who was the unfortunate one? Uncle Pietro. He's a broke his neck. <laughs> well, that's one way to go. <laughs> and where is the body? The body's in the store, but the head is in the backyard. <laughs> what? Uh, who was the attending physician? Oh, I'm going to call the doctor. If I cannot fix it with a glue, I throw him in the incinerator. <laughs> well, I'm just the like the Schultz, so you have a loss to laugh. <laughs> yeah. Manic depressive type. <laughs> uh, tell me, who was responsible for your uncle's demise? Please, my uncle never have a demise. <laughs> He's a keeper cat. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss that the broken statue of Uncle Pietro. Statue? Oh, <laughs> well, why didn't you say so immediately? For a moment, I thought you were peculiar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, uh, who did you come to see about? Me. <laughs> you. <laughs> Aren't you a little premature coming in when you're alive? What the then? I'm a coming in when I'm a dead? <laughs> well, okay, bud. It's your funeral. We'll be glad to reserve a spot for you. Oh, that's a fine. When can I move in? <laughs> well, uh, whenever you're ready, we are. Oh, that's a fine. I'm moving it tonight. What? Oh, is there something else? Very important. I'm going to like it to call it. Is it got a plenty of heat in this place? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Depends on which direction you go, sir. <laughs> uh, now for our record, your name? Luigi Bosco. A height? Five feet to four and a half inches. Uh, no half sizes, five feet five. <laughs> now would you like pine, redwood, or mahogany? It is all the same to you. I'm like a wall of paper. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, hello. Hey, why are you look so white? It's a long story, Pasquale. I thought I was a get an apartment and I find I join a cemetery. <laughs> oh, you big stupid boba. You got a lot of brains. Please, please, Pasquale. That's no way to talk to a corpse. <laughs> and what's your plans now, little cabbage head? I'm going to get the plans, Pasquale. Any minute, the man from fire department is walking and throw me out of my store. Pasquale is all over with the Luigi. I think I'm going to go to the river. Luigi, which would you rather do? Commit the suicide or marry my Rosa? Well... Don't answer! <laughs> Besides, you in an opposition of bargain. As soon a man is going to come from a fire department, and even though I'm your landlord, I'm going to have to throw you out, you're going to sleep in the park. All right, the Pasquale. I'm Mary Rose. Luigi, I knew the day would have come you to fall in love. <laughs> well, the happy bride is waiting outside. I'm going to call her. Rosa! 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 You call me, Rosa! <laughs> Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi! Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa, is it two men who stand in the hair? Guess which one is to say he's going to marry you. But, Papa, you're already married to Mama. Oh, shut up, you face. <laughs> now, Luigi, 
Let me see your kiss to the happy bride. <laughs> Sorry, I promised her to marry her and not to kiss her. Then, Rosa, you kiss the Luigi. <laughs> Rosa, how you expected to kiss a Luigi if you stand there with a big pail of water in your hand? Put it down. But, Papa, I was just washing the floor. Hello, is Mr. Basco here? Uh, I'm Lieutenant McKeever of the Fire Inspection Department. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Fireman. He's all right, the Lieutenant and Mr. Fireman. I'm going to take care of everything. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to close up at the store and move out. Mr. Basco, it's not necessary for you to move out. We just want you to comply with the fire regulations. And I see you've already met one of our requirements. Because I'm going to get married? Well, I don't know about that. But I see you got a pail of water handy. Now get yourself a pail of sand and an axe, and the law will be satisfied. What? Mamma mia. And that's all? Well, not exactly. There's a $50 fine which has to be paid. $50? I'm, I'm not got the money. I pay the fine, Mr. Fireman. I'm his father-in-law. You don't have to pay it. The landlord is supposed to pay it. <laughs> the landlord that pays the fine? That's right. Pasquale. Yes, my son? Hello, landlord. Goodbye, father-in-law. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, everything is end up pretty good. And I'm going to learn other lessons in America. Fire prevention. This is an important, Mamma Mia. Saves millions of lives, millions of dollars of a property. So I, Luigi Basco, because I want to be a good citizen, I do my share. You should see what I'm going to do to my store now, Mamma Mia. It's not only got a pail of water and a sand, but also I got an axe, a fire extinguisher. I'm going to take down the paper window shades. I'm going to throw away the paper plates. And even a wooden Indian that's standing at my doorway smoking a pipe, I'm going to buy him ash tray. <laughs> <laughs> also, when I'm going to get enough for money, I'm going to buy a sprinkler system. It's a wonderful and new invention so men can put out the fire and take a shower at the same time. <laughs> Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant son. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Shipp as Miss Balding, and Jody Gilbert as Rosa. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. Later tonight on most of these same CBS stations, you'll hear Norman Corwin's latest hour-long radio drama, Citizen of the World. We believe that as Luigi's friend, you'll find Citizen of the World an inspiring account of the world today. You'll hear how men of many nations are working quietly and well to combat plagues, discover new medical techniques, straighten out international misunderstandings. You'll hear the voices of Marlena Dietrich, Admiral Nimitz, Carl Sandburg, many other famous people telling you about their views of citizenry in the world. Citizen of the World will star Lee J. Cobb, the noted Broadway actor, and you can listen to this drama of hope, good cheer, hard work, and honesty in just about an hour. Paul Masterson speaking. Stay tuned now for Earn Your Vacation, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>